We are slowly making progress developing our new site and I'm really excited to see it coming together. I've posted previous videos on other elements in this design, including the annual vegetable garden, the orchard in the northwest corner, and a pecan guild on the east side. But that left me with this odd little space that I haven't known how to tackle. I wanted to use it to create a visual barrier between the driveway and the backyard, but I just couldn't figure out what to do with it. And then I realized it is the perfect location for a phenology garden. And if you're thinking phenolo what, uh, I am gonna walk through what a phenology garden is and why I'm using it, as well as kind of a step-by-step -step design tutorial here at the end of the video. But I'm gonna have to film this one pretty quickly. There is definitely a storm coming in. <laughs> You're gonna see my hair blowing all over the place. Apologies for the audio on this one. I just wanted to film this before the rain came. What is phenology? Phenology is planting according to nature's visual cues. The conventional approach is to base it off of your first and last frost date. I use the conventional approach with frost dates for my zip code to decide when to start my transplants indoors, but to decide when to actually put them out in the garden as well as when to direct seed things into the garden, I do think it's really, really nice to be able to look at what's happening in your environment and understand if it's really the right time or not. Might seem obvious, but it bears emphasizing because this is a visual cue calendar, you gotta be able to see it. Uh, you don't wanna put this in some remote corner of the property and forget all about it. This needs to be something that will show up day to day and be very much in your face. And that's why I'm picking this particular area. Standing at the southwest corner of the house, this is where my bedroom and bathroom will be looking. This is my view. This area where I have got this whole planting planned is visible from the house. Uh, I will be able to see it out of my bedroom window every morning and it is going to be highly visible from the annual vegetable garden, which will be located here. That makes it a really good spot to catch those visual cues. The first step in any garden design is what do you want to plant? So this is my chart. Uh, it lays out my plants that I like to put out as annual crops every year in the garden and ties them to the perennial plants that will give me the visual cues that I need. Starting with your cold hardy crops, radishes and spinach can go out when crocuses are in bloom. Peas, onions, and lettuce can go out when the forsythia is blooming. For beets, carrots, my coal crops like broccoli and cauliflower or chard, I'm looking for the daffodils to be blossoming. Potatoes go out with the first bloom of dandelions. Beans and cucumbers can go out when apple trees are dropping their petals. Tender squashes can go out once the lilac is in full bloom. Tomatoes when the flowering dogwood is at their peak and peppers and eggplant once your bearded iris is blossoming. Last would be my really heat-loving melons like cantaloupe and watermelon. Those would go out when peonies are in bloom. This is a nice mix, at least in my opinion. I mean, worst case, even if I plant this and decide screw phenology, it's not working for me anymore, I'm just gonna end up with a really attractive flower garden, highly visible from my backyard. Not a bad thing. Good news for me, uh, I already have some of these plants. So behind me, you can kind of see there is an old orchard that somebody abandoned on the property at one point and it has a very very large apple tree i don't have to worry about working an apple tree into this design because this has already been done for me another free plant already on the site was a peony that was part of an old flower garden that we discovered as we were clearing we saved it and it has been living ever since in this container on my back patio i'm going to relocate this into the phenology garden Partly for nostalgia reasons, I just like the history of it, but also because I love a free plant. All the way at the east edge of our property, we have a lilac bush. Now there's no way this is going to work for visual cues. It's quite literally blocked by the garage. Uh, it's off by its little lonesome here, but my hope is to take cuttings from this, propagate them and see if I can also get a free lilac bush out of the deal. If not, I will just break down and buy a lilac bush. Let me start walking through the design layout that I've done for this area. You'll note the driveway there, <laughs> please ignore that porta potty, but you'll note the driveway there. That's the north end of the property. There's a busy road. I would like to create a visual barrier between that very busy area and the backyard. So the north side of this particular planting is going to have taller shrubs and trees to help block that view and the sound. I've brought up my handy dandy plant database file uh, to help show you how I would work through this normally. I made this available online as a Google Doc and the link is below and I went through it in more detail during my last uh, video on the pecan guild. But this is a bunch of plants listed alphabetically. Um, I just made this for my own use. There's a lot of attributes like their height and spread and their hardiness. But I added a phenology column to this one, um, which is highlighted in purple in the file and that's what I'm going to focus on today. 
If you click on that, you can bring up the ability to filter and you uncheck blank. So you're left with only the yeses, click OK, and you can see we now have only the plants that are relevant for this planting. So the apple, the peony, et cetera, et cetera, over here on the left. And for each of them, I have shown their height, their spread or width, and their sunlight requirements, which is going to be important for reasons you'll see in a second. And then just wanted to quickly note in this case, jaglone tolerance is pretty good here. Um, this part of my yard was completely infested with buckthorn. We're slowly winning our war with the buckthorn, but until we completely finish that, um, there's gonna be some in the soil. And I'm glad to see that a lot of these guys are in fact jaglone tolerant. Here is the site laid out to scale. I have marked the area we're interested in in yellow here. We've got roughly 60 by 20 feet to fill if we wanna use all of it. And then here are the plants drawn to scale, zoomed in a bit. I've grayed out everything else. Dogwood is our tallest, and I've started with that on the left, all the way down to our shortest on the right. Blue is a shade loving plant. Orange is something that requires full sun and green indicates really versatile plants that can handle everything from full sun to partial shade. I'll start with the tallest plant, which is my dogwood, and it does want some shade. I'm gonna tuck it under the mature trees that are already there with their high canopies. There's room underneath them for it to grow to full height, no problem. The lilac, I will place as the visual barrier I mentioned before, over between the mature trees and the house. A dogwood has kind of an open form and won't provide too much of a barrier, but the lilac is nice and bushy and it should give that visual privacy that we're looking for. And this site gives it the full sun that it wants. The next tallest are my forsythia and my peony. These are much more adaptable plants. Uh, they can handle a range of light levels. I'm gonna put them at the edge of the eventual dogwood mature canopy line. Initially, they'll get full sun, um, but then over time as the dogwood grows, they will become partially shaded um, and they'll be able to handle all of those various light conditions. Iris does need full sun, so I will tuck it outside of the dogwood canopy and place it over by the lilac tree uh, to make sure that it gets that full sun. It's much shorter, no worries about it blocking the view of the lilac. And then last, um, I have some crocus and daffodils to go in. I will plant those just in a large en masse planting and put them underneath the dogwood canopy kind of right there in the middle. Storm is seriously coming in. I'm gonna wrap this up. I know this was a short one. Sorry for the audio, it's usually better than this. But I hope this was helpful. And if anybody is trying this or has already done it, um, please let me know. I would love some tips on this. It's my first time doing it kind of for real versus just anecdotally noticing my neighbor's plants <laughs> over time. So seriously, if you have tips, I would appreciate them and I'm sure that other people would as well. Until next time, hope it was helpful. Thanks.